we're gonna do some geology today because I know you like that. And we're gonna look for a lost mine in the process. All right, we got the toy loaded up and we're headed up into those hills right there. You've got granitic rock here and then you have this what's called migmatite right here. We're undergone melting, compression and melting. Now, this is a good example right here of when nice starts to undergo pressure and temperature changes. It starts to fold, it can be folded repeatedly. And when that happens, it goes through a, a partial melt, not a full melt. And when that occurs, you get all this weird twisting and banding and that's called migmatite. So if you guys see this out in the field, that's what that is. I thought you guys would get a kick out of it. Here's some more examples right here, look at this. Classic migmatite. So whenever you see all these different folds in nice, that's called migmatite. I'm walking up this wash. And do you see anything unusual right here? Right where my finger is, you see that? Just gobs and gobs of black sand right there. Tons of it. There's a distinction zone right here. You have this coming in from this side tributary right here, see that? But nothing over here. This means that there's a tremendous amount of iron coming from up there. And this is what you should be looking for too if you're out prospecting, especially some of these side tributaries that are feeding into a main creek or stream or wash. Because a lot of times the gold might be coming in from somewhere high up on the mountain and then feeding in from the side tributary. And what you're gonna wanna do is as you're going up, you're gonna sample. You gotta be a detective on this. What you wanna do is when you're sampling, you wanna dig out the bedrock. Don't mess with the flow sand, the loose stuff. There ain't gonna be nothing in there except very fine, fine flood gold. Focus your attention on the bedrock. Clean out to the very deepest cracks and note how much gold you're getting and then move up further. You see this? You know what that is? It's falling apart. It's decomposing biotite schist. When schist has a dominant mineral in it, that mineral's name will stand in front of the word. This is schist, it's got a lot of biotite in it, so we call it biotite schist. And biotite is a type of mica. You can always tell schist because you see the foliation in there. All the banding, you can see all the mica in there. So don't be confused. Now there's a lot of iron coming down out of this side tributary. Remember I told you, walk the washes, look for the side tributaries. It's not always gonna be in the middle of the wash. Sometimes it's gonna feed from these sides. And that's what you should be doing too. See that I got a whole bunch of bedrock exposure right here. I've got all this beautiful looking granite. It's got all the pink feldspar in it. And of course the quartz and the mica and the horn blend. You can see where it's running almost perpendicular across the wash. This would be a perfect trap for gold, little tiny gold. And that's where these two machines really shine because they're great at finding tiny, tiny gold. They're not good at going really deep, but they can find the smallest of gold in bedrock up close to the surface. What I want to do is I want to get up further into this wash. And that's what you should do too when you start seeing large concentrations of black sand. Now that doesn't guarantee that there's going to be gold in there because I found a lot of gold where there was no black sand whatsoever. But it is a good indicator, especially if you're in a gold producing district. Keep those words in mind. I see a lot of granitic rock and I see a lot of biotite mica, schistose rock. See that? That's granitic. I see a little bit of iron staining, but I don't see anything that gets me too excited. You can see where somebody's been digging right here. I'm gonna take a soil sample. Here's the country rock, granitic rock, granitoid nature. It's got that beautiful red staining. That is always nice. I see a little bit of limonite. See the limonite right there? Keep in mind that limonite is a general term, okay? But for the most part, it means iron oxide. When pyrite oxidizes, it leaves behind iron oxides and gold, if any gold was traveling in the sulfide. You know what that is? It's a piece of ironstone. And you can see where I have nice, and you can see right here. See the ironstone locked right up in there? That's always a good sign, right there. Look what I'm standing on. This is biotite schist. It's a schistose rock. It's metamorphic in nature. It's got a lot of black specks in it. You have schist in there and you can have horn blend in there too. Now in most cases, what you would do is you would start metal detecting at the bottom when you're working your way up. But me, I wanna find out where those big chunks of iron are coming from. Even though you have gold down below, doesn't mean you have gold up higher. The vein could have eroded out millions of years ago and what you got is the tail end of it. So keep that in mind too. All right, I got a big quartz vein up here and it's heavy with mineralization. Come here, look at this. Here's the quartz vein I got right here. 
It's got a steep dip to it, and it looks like it's got a northeast strike to it. Now you can see the iron inclusions in there. That's a good sign. And the geology is looking real good. See those bands of quartz running through there, the stringers? And all that beautiful red granitic rock. Ooh, this is exactly what you want to see when you're out prospecting. Oh my gosh. Look at that. You got epidote all mixed in through there. See the limonite staining in it? And that's what you're looking for when you're out prospecting. You take chip samples or grab samples, and then you take them back and you process them to see how, what your ounce per ton is. That is a piece of nice. And if you look closely, you can see garnet in there too. Really tiny garnet. And they usually grow inside of the foliations here. The protolith, or the original rock of gneiss, can come from two different sources. It can either be a piece of granite that has undergone a tremendous amount of heat and pressure, or it could have been a piece of schist that went undergone a tremendous amount of heat and pressure. Beautiful quartz vein. It's brecciated. See that? And where does it go? Right there. Huge, huge vein with an east-west strike to it. Wow. See the outcropping up there? And there's float going all the way down the hill. See it? All right, so I found the source. Got a lot of schistose rock. I've got a lot of gneiss. I got some quartz monzonite. And then I've got these silica veins just loaded with iron. Look at that. That's where all that black sand is coming from in those chunks of iron. That's magnetite. And you got some hematite in there too. All right, let me set up the detectors. <laughs> Look at my little bar right there. Remember this one is nails and iron and trash. This one's gold. See how it's shooting over to the left? Now I can tell by the sound that that's iron. And it don't surprise me because it's a big old chunk of that, that silica vein with all the iron stone in it. See what I mean? So because I've got so much iron in here, I can use the discrimination button and see if I can find anything there. <laughs> now I did a video on how to ground balance this, so I'll leave a link down below if you want to see that. You can just hear that iron. It doesn't have a definitive sound, more like a bong bong. Ooh, but that sounds good. Iron? Ka! Yeah, I get used to that. Anytime you find outcroppings that have any kind of gold in them, clean up all around the bottom of them because a lot of times the gold over a thousand if not millions of years will leach out down into the soil. That's how they do soil samples. Collect it all up. That's an easy way to determine how much gold is locked up in there. So we're going to collect all this up. I'm going to pound some more vein out. We'll crush it back at the shop. But I want to see what we got here. Look at that. They got it all concreted up. They've been working the heck out of that. See, they went down and then they got a, looks like they had a little bit of a stoked out area. That's what I saw in the back. Cliff Patron. Cliff Patron, whatever that means. There's a vent tube on it. Somebody ripped this door clean off. Look at that. It's nice and warm in there though. The reason why you do it this way is because 
gives you a snapshot what's going on. And it's easier to pan when you classify because if the same particles of sand and gold are in the gold pan together, then because of specific gravity density, the gold will win out over the lighter material every time. It'll stay behind while the water washes away the sand. Now I'm going to put him on there. I got him on a box. Hear that? Yeah, see how it ground balanced it out? Right there. Ooh, there's a good one. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Oh, yeah. No way. Yeah, look at that. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. That's what I'm talking about. I'll be crushing these up for sure. Oh, that's nice. Take a look at that meter. Yeah. All right, let's pan this out because now I'm curious. Jet dry breaks up the surface tension in the water. That way little fine gold doesn't float away. And yeah, gold does float when it's small enough. The surface tension, think of a mosquito floating on the water. All right, here we go. And yeah, you're gonna get wet. <laughs> look at all that quartz. Ooh, look at all that iron. That's what I'm talking about. Come get some, boy. Now I'm going slow because Load gold, which is usually fine, likes to ride on top of black sand. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got, boy. Oh, I see it already. Ah, ha, ha. ah, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Ooh, look at that, a piece of specimen gold. And look at all the finds in there. There must be a million finds. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, boy. Ooh, let me wash that down. Let me wash it down. See them all underneath the black sand, all the finds? Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, I like that one. Ooh, look at all these finds in there. Super fine. 100 mesh. Ooh, that's the one I want right there. Look at that. <sighs> look at that. Isn't that pretty? You ever see anything prettier than specimen gold? I didn't think so. Look at that, right from the vein. Ooh, I know where I'm going back to. And don't try to follow me either. I wonder what these look like in the daylight. If there's this much, I know there's more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and run all this through a jaw crusher and then check it again. I wanna give a big shout out to a couple YouTubers out there that I have a lot of respect for who do this all the time. One is Tony out in Australia, Famo59. I'll leave a link to his channel down below. Another one is Bill Southern. His is Nugget Shooter Journals. I'll leave a link for him. And of course, good buddy of mine, Chris Ralph. How do you doing, Chris? I'll leave a link down below because he does this stuff all the time too in the motherload country. Don't forget, we're giving away that one ounce nugget that we've mined out of the drift mine. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And if you're not a premium patron and you want to get involved with getting some of that gold, just click the link that looks like that. Looks like that. Click on it, make a $10 pledge, and you might have yourself one ounce nugget too. Don't get any easier than that, does it? All right, so I'm gonna get on out of here because I gotta go back and get the rest of that gold because I know where it's at. But nobody else does either. Take care, everybody.